We're going to skip the diesel fuel. Go down to servicing. If I'm going to change engine oil, the number one thing you really need to do is wipe that area clean. Before you pull a dipstick to check oil, wipe around the dipstick. And oil tends to collect dirt very readily. And right around the dipstick is a notorious place to collect it. And every time I pull it out, if I let a piece of dirt or grass fall in there, it doesn't take very much dirt before you're going to ruin that engine. And so clean around it before I pull the dipstick. If I'm going to drain the oil, wipe around the oil plug before I clean it and pull it out. And you think, well, if I'm changing the oil and I'm dropping that dirt into the oil pan, what does it matter? It's a troubleshooting thing. As I pull that pan out, you should be looking at the oil to see. Is there dirt in there? Is there metal particles? If you look at your engine oil and it's glittering, that's a pretty good indication that you're going to have a serious failure pretty soon. And as you pour the oil out, pour it into the waste oil barrel, I always look at the bottom of the pan and see what is in there. Is there a lot of debris in the bottom, a lot of dirt, anything that glitters, any kind of metal particles? Because I want to know beforehand if I have a problem. Remove the old filter in the gasket, replace it with a new filter in the gasket. The two biggest, common, most common mistakes that are in changing oil filter, the two mis mistakes is leaving two gaskets in place or the gasket being out of place. When you look at this, there's a, a rubber o-ring here. And you think it's kind of silly, but when you take it off, if the person before you didn't put a lubrication on here, didn't put oil on, this gasket actually sticks to the block. You pull it off, take the new one, stick it on, and there's two gaskets there. And it will leak like a sieve. If you have two of them on there, they start it up. You should be checking to make sure that you have leaks. If you have a leak, and you're like, oh, maybe I didn't tighten it. You grab it and you try to turn it again. If you've got to tighten it harder than with your hand and it still leaks, there's probably two gaskets in place. The other one, which is a gasket out of place, is actually uh, more common with a canister style filter. If you've got a filter that doesn't have a metal can on the outside, you take a housing off and you put this one in, they're supposed to come with a new O-ring. And if you're not careful and don't look, a lot of times you can't even tell that there's an O-ring there, so people don't change it. Or when they put this in, because it's not glued in, as they tighten it up, if you twist, it'll actually just push this gasket right out. And so if it leaks, look for two gaskets or the gaskets actually broke loose and actually pushed itself out. So those are the two mistakes that you're going to see. Is that the end of the page? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before we actually are done, I want to talk about synthetic oil. This has all been in regular standard oil. What's the difference between synthetic oil and regular oil? And if you go to any seminar or talk to anyone or watch TV and they have an ad, they talk about synthetic oil, they talk about extended oil changes. You can go through and, and not change the oil for 100,000 miles or 50,000 miles. It's all manufactured by, all man-made uh, manufactured. And so how can, I, how can I run an oil 50,000 miles if my car says I change it every 7,000 miles? Is it possible to run oil that long? Has anybody ran synthetic oils? It doesn't break down. You've ran it? What, do you know what brand you were running? Uh, I think it's Delco. Delco. Delco? What were you guys running? I don't run it, but 